Byline's roving cameraman is in the nation's capital. Spotted on his way to work is Scoville Richardson, chairman of the Federal Parole Board and first Negro ever appointed to the board. Mr. Richardson and Howard Jenkins and Miss Roberta Church, who hold important Labor Department positions, were all appointed under the Eisenhower administration. One of the largest groups to be recruited under the new six-month reserve program by an organized reserve training unit, 36 Marine reservists of the 1st Engineer Battalion from Baltimore report for six months training at the Marine Corps' Recruit Depot, Paris Island, South Carolina. Wishing them well, along with their families, is General James Devereaux of Wake Island fame, Republican Congressional Representative from Maryland. Brigadier General Tom Enos, Director of Reserve Activities for the Marine Corps, and Walter Veneman, Secretary to the Mayor of Baltimore. When their recruit training is finished, these Marines will finish the balance of their obligated service with the 1st Engineer Battalion in Baltimore. football time at Baltimore's Memorial Stadium. The invading favorite Chicago Bears kick into the end zone, and the Baltimore Colts take over first and ten on their own 20. Ex-Penn State Negro star Lenny Moore reels off nine yards. Fleet halfback was Colts' first draft choice. Bears take over in fancy running by Negro star Bobby Watkins, who gained fame at Ohio State. Moves ball into touchdown territory. As Bears draw first blood, and get off to an early seven to nothing lead. to the rafters and 45,000 cheering fans see the Colts upset the Dolphsters with a 28 to 21 win. <laughs> to the backdrop of rippling water and a resort hotel, the Washington chapter of the Continentals are hosts in Colton, Maryland at the last outing of the season. The refreshing water of the hotel pool is a haven for the guests and members from other chapters all on the eastern sea coast who are on hand for the festivities. One of the highlights of the weekend was party given at the smart country home of the Charles Jackson. Mrs. Jackson is a Washington continental. Well, these lovely Corins know who they're for. They're for Ike, Pat, Mary, and Alice. These lovely fashion models, Dorothea Toll, Mary Cunningham, and Frances Wallace, look quite smart promenading down New York's Fifth Avenue, displaying left back Ike buttons.
Look out, girls. This fellow is an old Ike admirer. Highline is very happy to be in the offices of the United States Mission to the United Nations. And we have sitting here with us this morning a very lovely young lady, Mrs. Carmel Carrington Marr. How are you? Fine, thank you. Good morning, Mr. Alexander. It's very nice to have you visit us. Well, you know, we want to talk about some of the work that you do with the United States Mission. Well, my official title is Advisor on Political and Legal Affairs. And uh, if you weren't here this morning, I would be reading some of the papers that are on the desk because a good deal of my work involves the search. Uh, my, perhaps the most interesting part of it is the liaison that I do with other delegations. Uh, we are the host country here in the United States, and as host country, we have certain responsibilities to assume. Uh, I work on those, and uh, in pursuance of that, I frequently come into contact with the members of the other 75 delegations to the United Nations. It's very interesting. Uh, in addition, there isn't any question, I suppose, that comes up in the United Nations that doesn't have some legal aspect to it. Well, this is a, a very uh, interesting opportunity for us because I know uh, President Eisenhower and his appointees have certainly uh, gathered a lot of talent here uh, in the name of Mrs. Carmel Carrington Marr. Thank you very much for letting us visit you. And now, we leave the U.N. where minds work to maintain a peace championed by President Eisenhower. 